Hey, welcome back to another Black City Coffee vlog. So like I was saying in the last video, I um, wanted to translate all the information that I learned in my sample roasts and then translate that to a production roast, meaning um, a full batch, something I would sell. So I just got done roasting a bunch of production roasts and a couple of like one-off experimental roasts. And I learned a lot. So that's what this video is. So I'm just gonna go through kind of like my process. Um, this is not like teaching you how to roast. This is me sharing uh, what I learned, taking my data from sample roasting, transferring and trying to uh, uh, scale that up to a production roast. These were all the samples that I didn't like, so I'll actually put these aside right next to you. So now I store roasted coffee in these before they go off into real bags. So this is that Mexico light, the last roast that I did. Cool, let's keep, let's put that aside. And this one was the first version I did of this. So it's a Mexico Chiapas. It's for the um, roaster's choice this month. And um, I chose this because I like to just mix it up. And um, this is a very, uh, this is a Mexico Tipica 900 to 1300 elevation. We're gonna keep this here. And I knew this one was gonna feel underdeveloped, so I did it again. Cause I was like, I don't think that's gonna taste very good. So I did it again and that's what is in this bag, which we'll actually cup them and make sure. Cause you never know when you're actually, you're at the roaster, you're looking at data, you're looking at numbers and you're like, I think that's not gonna taste that good. So you stick to your roaster's gut and you go, I'm gonna do it again. And I'm gonna hit the numbers that I feel comfortable with, but I'm still gonna cup it because I gotta make sure, <laughs> I gotta verify in the cup. I now bring a scale with me. I'm gonna get a better one. This one's not very good. All right. We have a couple of orders in here. So we have a Vietnam dark, Vietnam medium, Vietnam light, and a Brazil. Let me show you my findings. I'm gonna pull out my trusty roaster log. So nice to have it in here. And it just feels official. Um, at Clatch, they use little Dixie cups, so I'm gonna use these. So I need more cups. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just get 50 grams of each of these. I'll put these away, and then we're gonna talk about um, what I learned in my roast log. So basically I have a tag, a little cup, and I'll say Vietnam light, I could put the varietal on there, but I only I already know what I'm working with. If I if I was dealing with a newer coffee, I'd put more details. But since this is stock coffee, I would maybe call it like Vietnam stock or something. Um, light, 50 grams, 14% um, weight loss, 17% DTR, and then I have the um, production roast ID. So if you're using a roasting software like I use RoastPass, so they'll call it RP a dash and a number. So I'll line this up, that way I can go find and look up the rose curve if I need to. So PR 283 right here. So I go 50 grams. I can probably go less, cause I don't need that much, but I'm gonna be doing some um, like blending and stuff like that. So I just wanna have a little extra first and then we can kind of cut down on coffee waste and things like that. Or shrinkage, they call that shrinkage. Okay, we are all measured out. And how we're gonna do this and cup them together is, I typically want to cup all washed coffees or similar coffees, similar coffees at one time, all naturals at one time, all like crazy rare and stuff at one time because you wouldn't wanna cup everything all at the same time because say you have something really, really good or um, just really, really different from the rest. Uh, if you're tasting something really good on the table along with say some like maybe naturals. So say if you have something like a crazy geisha on, at the same time when you're cupping like Brazil Ipe <laughs> natural, um, it's just gonna blow that Brazil out of the water. It's not gonna taste very good. You kind of be ruined for the rest of the table. So you wanna calibrate your instrument. So um, what I'll do is I have these other samples, right? The sample roasts of Vietnam. I have production roasts of Vietnam and I'm gonna cup all these together, okay? 
And then maybe on a, on a different day, because I just roasted, um, this is a Mexico. I just roasted this Brazil. I'm going to wait a day and then, and then cut that against my sample roast Brazils versus my production roast Brazil. But I need to wait because naturals need more time to off gas. Then uh, I would probably wait a full 24 hours before I cupped these, right? But it's the stock coffee that I have. I'm just making sure. I'm just doing some quality control. So I feel like I can cut the corners a little bit, okay? I'm not trying to buy anything right now. I'm just trying to make sure the coffee that I'm sending to the customer tastes good, all right? And that, you know, the new profile that I created on the sample roast matches what I'm trying to do in production. Okay, different strokes for different um, goals and purposes. Make sure you know what you're doing before you just blindly do stuff, right? Oh, so-and-so told me, so I'm gonna do it. It should be if this, then that, in whatever your system is, okay? Now I wanna show you something. The difference between a light, medium, and dark. This was cool. This is something that I sell so that if you are if you are interested in seeing how um, a coffee can change its flavor, its characteristics, its body, and its mouthfeel just by changing the profile. Um, you can try that out, okay? So obviously you wanna see a progression of color from light, medium, to dark. Um, I see it very clearly. These are closer together. This is starkly light, starkly dark. The coffee that you have right here, that's your medium. Right, right here is a light, obviously, and this is a dark. So the lighting is playing some uh, role here, but you know, even if I did take out the light, I could tell this is light, this is dark, this is somewhere in between. So let me give you the stats on these coffees, okay? How I did this was I had my profile, my sample roast, which is right here, and this was my sample roast, right? So I had to then translate this to a production roast, a full batch, because this is a thousand, this is a hundred grams, and I had to translate that to a thousand gram batch. So this is what I did. So I knew that I needed to turn around based on my sample roast data a lot quicker than I had been in the past. So what I did was a 360 charge, a little bit lower than I was doing before, but no soak, okay? Meaning I didn't have fuel off for a minute um, at this time, I had fuel right from the get-go, from the beginning. So when I hit 360, I already had the fuel on, um, I think at like full power, okay? So this one I turned around a little bit quicker, but not as quick as I wanted to, but I think it'll be okay. That all depends on what we cup here today and see if it matches up. So at turning point at 154, I noted that as too slow, maybe charge higher. Um, a dry end at four minutes 34 at 304 uh, degrees. First crack at 818 at 378. I had some outliers. So, so what I'm doing differently at first crack is uh, because coffees can crash after that first crack, it's releasing a lot of moisture and you wanna, typically you wanna crank up the air, right? Because you wanna um, flush out all that smoke. Right, that's, that's kind of what you hear online. The thing is, is that you can um, kind of take away a lot of the temperature in the drum by doing that. So what I do now is I'll bump up the temp and anticipate that um, so that my coffees don't crash and it works. So, um, I'll go into a little bit more detail about that. I know I kind of like went over that really quickly, but I wanna just go over the general thing of these. So what I did was I had this at the roaster so I could see the color uh, because I know it's not gonna be a one-to-one -one comparison. So I had this right, right near the sight glass. I'm pulling the trier and I'm making sure that this color matches, uh, this color matches my sample. Okay, because I know I want it, I want it to taste similarly. So I got, I dropped it at 10.09, temperature was 4.02. I had a 17% DTR. Um, and I dropped it a little earlier because I thought my, my turning point was a little late. So I kind of made that, you know, since in my sample roast, I turned around at around a minute nine and then I dropped at 20%. But here I changed it just based on that information. I was like, I think 
and, and the color, of course. I'm looking at the color and I'm like, oh, it's, it's still kind of light. It's not really here. It's not matching this. And that's why um, I made that decision there at the roaster. Okay. And then I got a 14% weight loss when I did all my, when I weighed the output. And that matches my 14% weight loss of my Vietnam sample. So I was like, cool. I didn't over roast it. I didn't under roast it. Um, we're equal here. So I want to see if that is actually good <laughs> when I cup this and I cup it against this and I want to make sure that these taste, you know, the same. Hope you can see that. That was the light roast for Vietnam. Next, I had to do medium one. So I, I knew I was going to go a shade darker. So again, I still kept this near the sight glass so I could see I need to go darker than this. And it needs to all match up with the numbers. So here's what I did for the medium. So I underlaid this roast in my uh, roast profile. That way I could, um, that way I could go a little bit longer um, and develop a little bit more sweetness in the curve, you know, based on the curve that I saw here. So I wanted, I wanted this as a guide, but not to follow or not to match, but to um, see where I was before and then do something, you know, do it medium based off of that. So I charged at 370, you know, taking my notes, I charged a little bit higher, no soak, we're at a full batch, turned around at 148. Um, I feel like that's still a little later than I thought that I want, but I don't know, I, I need to cup it. Dry end was at 402. First crack was at 721, so a little early. I think um, maybe uh, managing the fuel there just a little too hot. It was going a little fast, uh, but not a big deal. And then I dropped at 916 at 415, so the temperature was higher, so that's good, and the DTR was 20%. Um, weight loss was at 15%, which was good. You know, I want it to be more than the last one because it's why a medium. So it's swelled more, it's lost a little bit more, um, I guess, density and a little bit more weight because I'm roasting it longer. So that makes sense. So if, if this number in weight loss was less than this and I was calling it a medium, like say DTR was still 20%, but the weight loss was still maybe equal or less than this one, that would be an issue. There would be something wrong. Okay, so that's why we, we, we need to know what the weight loss is. And it needs to kind of match up and tell us everything. It's like a check. Check this, check that, check, check, check. Okay, next. Dark roast. So again, I underlaid this one because I knew I needed to be darker than this one. I didn't want to produce something similar or um, too close to it. I want it to be considerably darker than this one. I want you to be able to taste it. Like, this is dark, this is medium, this is light, right? So I did a 380 charge here. Uh, turn around at 154 and I was like, why is that late? And then I looked at the, <laughs> I looked at the machine, the hopper door was open. I was like, damn it, all right, okay. So that maybe means I'm 10 seconds behind. So I'm just gonna work that into the rest of my roast. No soak again, um, dry end was at four minutes. Um, yeah, four minutes, and then first crack was at 7.30. So again, a little bit too, moving really fast, so I had to slow down. I had to slow down real quick. Um, I dropped it at second crack. I started to hear these little like secondary pops after first crack at uh, 10 minutes, four. Um, and I was at a temperature of 4.22. So I was considerably hotter. So cool, I was like, that's good. And then when I got my end weight, it was 15.9% weight loss. I was like, good, I've gone longer. Um, everything matches up. It was a 25% DTR, 15.9% uh, 15 weight loss. Everything seems to be okay, all right? So those are the little things I'm checking off in my brain um, and making sure that, you know, this dark is indeed dark, okay? I'm gonna cup these now. Um, I hope that was helpful. Um, I'm gonna cup them and I'm just, I'm not gonna take you through the whole thing. I'm just gonna tell you what my results were and if it was a yes or a no. All right, results, check it out. So 
I start from here, one, two, three, four, numbered them there, I have it. This is really about quality control. So that is the goal of this cupping. This is like to make sure, does this taste like a solid medium? Does it correlate with the numbers? Is this a dark? Is this a light? Is this, and how does it compare to the sample roast? Now sample roast will always be a little bit lighter. When you're buying, because you wanna see, you wanna see the potential of a bean, right? for the most part. Sample roast is right here. And when I ground them up, I could tell that my sample roast was, it was, it was noticeably lighter than my light production roast, but still light compared to this dark one and this medium one for sure. And even when these were ground up, there was a, con a discernible difference. So that's good. Number one, it was a medium. On the fragrance, I got stewed garden herbs, tomatoes, really nice. I got milk chocolate. Um, there was a brightness coming in later on around 10 minutes. It was really nice. It was really sweet. It had a nice sweet little finish. Um, I got raisins and plums. So the first note or the most overpowering note I think is the milk chocolate. Um, that, that sweetness is really solid in there. So I'm happy with that. And I feel like that can go in an espresso. That can go um, for a drip, it can go, it can be a nice base for a lot of blends. So that's good. If I look at the profile for this, I think I'll keep that one and I'll keep that underlay and, and try to repeat that and be consistent with it. Nice long finish, like a graham cracker finish. Number two, the fragrance was meaty, salty. I don't like that smell. Um, when you're smelling the fragrance, you'll make a note of it. And uh, when you go into taste the flavor, you shouldn't let that uh, influence or make you like, oh, I don't, I'm not going to like this. It, it should be like, you should still go into when you actually are tasting the, the coffee, like come in with a blank slate as much as possible. It's just interesting. You know, you want to make those notes so you can go, huh, that's interesting. Okay. Much more roasty. It's dark chocolate and you need to wait for these to cool a little bit for you actually to taste that stuff. So if you're tasting your coffee, like say you're, um, and I'm gonna run my own test, but you're pouring, you did so pour over a drip coffee or whatever AeroPress, you gotta wait a little bit till you can actually taste all these notes that I'm talking about, okay? This dark chocolate is on, more on the waxy side, so more, more cocoa, more cacao. You know how they have the percentage of the bar, how much, how much uh, cocoa or cacao, is it cacao, in there? So definitely more on the like higher end side, 70 side, 70% 70 side of more cocoa versus um, sugar. So definitely more sugar in the medium roast. Uh, that's what I'm tasting. Um, and less sugar here. So definitely more on the darker side. Okay. So those were like the darker roasts. Let's come over here to the lighter roast. This one was my production roast, my new production roast, um, with the new method of roasting, still light, light profile. So I got apple pie and toffee, um, in the fragrance. And then on the flavor, I got milk chocolate, got toffee, got a like a spice, like a clove. And then the fruit in there, it's not that bright, it's not that acidic. I'd call it um, like a raspberry. You know how like a raspberry is very kind of subtle sweetness? Soft, that's what's here. Um, better body um, than this one, than the production, the sample roast one. More body here, so I like that. I, I would call this a more balanced light roast. Um, and I think this would be good with anything. Many uses here. Number four, going back again to number four, that was my sample roast on the fragrance. It was much lighter, got apricot and chocolate, much brighter, not much, but brighter, brighter than this one. Um, it's a milk chocolate with a fruit I couldn't identify yet until it cooled a little bit more and I called it dried mango. You know, you get those dried mango slices in a bag. That's what that tastes like. Um, definitely more acid here or not acid, but acidity, if I put more acid, uh, it's brighter, maybe like a pour over, would be really nice for this, thinner body of course, um, so not as balanced, so I would call this more balanced than this one, and then that just comes down to preference, whether you like a very thin tea-like body, or you like something with a little bit more body, here at Black City Coffee, I like more body, because I, I want to feel the coffee in my mouth, I don't like I kind of don't like the, the feel of tea. Something to just make note of, those are my personal preferences or what I call, what I like, like I like more body, so I want something more balanced and that's why I would say this one goes with everything. So I'm happy, I feel like it's good, it's consistent. I'm gonna run off these new profiles now. Um, I'm gonna, 
enter in all these notes and transfer them into my roast path and my roast log. Um, and then make sure that when I go to roast this again, I'm consistent with that profile. And that's, that's kind of the whole point is to do all this experimentation and data collection so that we can land on a profile that we can repeat. Okay, so those were the results. I hope you got something helpful out of there. I hope, I hope it was helpful. I'm just letting you get a peek into how I'm transforming and changing things, tightening things up, uh, the system of roasting, and um, trying to discernibly with data, proven data that I've collected for myself, not somebody telling me, um, oh, it should be this. It's my own data. It's my own um, palette here at the cupping table, making decisions and, and, uh, and then letting that kind of dictate what my decisions will be in the company and what I call good, bad, better, best. Okay, so that's what I encourage you guys to do. You guys are gonna hear a lot of voices online and this was frustrating for me because I'd be like, well, who do I listen to? And that's kind of tough. Um, so I'm so happy that I found somebody at Clatch, Mike Perry, who said, yeah, this is my way of doing it. And, um, and I came in there knowing that too, because Jared from SAA said that as well. He said, you know, he's gonna have his way, right? So just be mindful of that. <laughs> and nobody is really was telling me straight up, people are gonna have their own way. But I finally was able to discern it from that training. And they didn't tell me so directly. I'm telling you what I have uh, interpreted from this whole experience is that people have their own way. I need to find my own way. And if you have something um, that can help me, cool, let me go, let me try it first and let me prove it to myself. If it works for me, cool. If it doesn't, I'm not gonna take it, you know? And uh, because all of our situations are different and it's, it's not because I don't like you or um, you know, we're at odds in, uh, with each other or anything like that. It's, it's what's going to be here presented to me and if I'm able to do <laughs> and replicate that here. Okay. So find your own way, carve your own way. It's really great. And I love that you guys are here supporting the channel and, and learning with me. Um, but just be mindful, you know, we don't, don't take anything as law. Go there, Try it on your own, your own machine, your own whatever is going on. I have some subscribers that were roasting at like crazy elevation so they couldn't get their roaster as hot and that's an issue, right? So everybody's got a different situation and you need to tailor your roasting style to your situation. Okay, cool. All right, I'll see you in the next one.